Well, President Biden is the one who needs to make the decision right now as to whether he is going to stand with uh, public health community and the medical community um, to stand to save Black lives uh, and to reach his cancer moonshot goals to end cancer as we know it as a nation. The American Lung Association has issued a direct challenge to President Biden following the release of its State of Tobacco Control report. As Scripps News science and health correspondent Lindsay Thies explains, it wants the FDA to move quickly on a menthol cigarette ban. The FDA has put off finalizing a menthol ban for months, and the American Lung Association's annual tobacco report, just out, says that delay means increased addiction, disease, and death from tobacco products, especially among black Americans who are disproportionately impacted. More than 480,000 Americans die each year from tobacco use. The report grades states and federal lawmakers based on public health efforts to lower tobacco use, things like regulation, taxes, covering costs for medication and counseling to help people quit smoking. The report finds Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, North Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and West Virginia were the worst. 43 states have no restrictions on flavored tobacco products and no states banned flavored products last year either. Over 80% of those who use menthols are black, according to the report. All menthol is is a flavor. But more than that, menthol also reduces and suppresses cough and makes it easier for people to smoke a cigarette so they don't get those consequences, those immediate physiologic consequences like cough. Health-wise, e-cigs, vape, cigarettes, cigars, pipes, tobacco, any smoking products can damage far more than your lungs. Smoke can harm the arteries, it impacts the blood, the kidneys, the liver. It also raises the threat of blood clots, which can lead to stroke, heart attack, or pulmonary embolism. Now, as far as the menthol ban, the latest from the FDA is that we could expect a finalized ruling in March. Lindsay Thief, Scripps News, San Francisco. We're joined now by Scripps News Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Omar Awan. Dr. Awan, always good to have you. Before we get into your column this week, I want to ask you specifically about menthol cigarettes. Black Americans make up 80% of that customer base we heard a bit about it in the piece, but help me understand why menthol cigarettes specifically are so dangerous for those who smoke them. Well, they're dangerous, Christian, because it's so easy to start smoking them and it's really hard to quit smoking menthol cigarettes. Because as you heard Dr. Rutland say, you know, smoking them is uh, you can literally it, it has this cooling sensation. So it allows there to be ease when you smoke it. It also decreases the harshness to the smoke. So it makes it more enjoyable, more pleasurable. And unfortunately, this is perpetuating health disparities because the vast majority of people that are smoking menthol cigarettes happen to be Black Americans. And we can literally be saving hundreds of thousands of lives, particularly Black American lives, if we institute the ban on menthol cigarettes. So very important for Congress and hopefully President Biden to act on this and ban this all throughout the United States. Yeah, I learned something new this evening about menthol cigarettes, that cooling sort of sensation can, you know, keep people smoking them longer, more frequent, things of the like. All right, I want to uh, I want to keep you here with me while we dive into your article for Forbes this week on how a different kind of smoking, pot smoking, affects your health. The marijuana industry is having a moment right now. 24 states and D.C. have legalized recreational marijuana, and in 38 states plus D.C., medical marijuana is legal. Ohio is the newest state to legalize weed, doing so with a ballot measure. And more states could follow suit. Cannabis Business Times says there are campaigns in Florida, Idaho, Nebraska, and South Dakota, all hoping to put legalization in front of voters this November election. As weed becomes increasingly available, we wanted to look at how cannabis use affects your overall health. So with that, Dr. Awan, let's start with the pros here. Are there any proven medical benefits to marijuana? Definitely there are, Christian. There are certain things where it can actually help, and it, there are therapeutic uses 
that have proven in studies. For example, uh, it's mainly used to treat chronic pain, so especially neuropathic pain or pain that's associated with damaged nerves. Many studies have shown that it's extremely effective in treating that type of pain. Also, in patients that have cancer who are on chemotherapy, marijuana can certainly help treat symptoms like nausea and vomiting. So definitely some very important therapeutic uses. Uh, there are also uh, uses uh, in neurological diseases like seizures, certain rare forms of seizures can be treated with marijuana. So definitely there are important therapeutic issues that we should always consider when considering marijuana. Yeah, we've talked about the pros. I think you know what's coming next, the cons. What are the health downsides to smoking weed and is it addictive? Many downsides, Christian. Uh, definitely it's addictive. You know, 10% of people that use marijuana uh, develop addiction and dependence to marijuana, but it can affect pretty much almost every part of your body. You know, you start with the brain. Uh, definitely uh, negative consequences for one's learning, memory, attention. Uh, this also affects babies that are born to mothers that smoke marijuana. It can have, you know, long lasting effects on one's ability to learn. Also, it damages blood vessels. It results in scarring of the lungs, so difficulty breathing. It has been associated with lung cancer yet, but I think we need more research to demonstrate that it could potentially cause lung cancer. I mean, it has the same toxins and same chemicals that cause cancer you know, in tobacco. So I don't see how marijuana won't eventually cause lung cancer. But again, there's no research to substantiate that or back that up. And there has been new research that shows it actually poses a cardiovascular risk. So those that take marijuana and do it regularly have a higher chance of developing heart failure, heart attacks, and stroke. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I could go on and on and list how many harmful right. effects there are with marijuana, but I suspect all of you guys understand that, you know, there are definitely mm -hmm. negative consequences with marijuana use. Sure. With the last uh, 30 seconds we have left here, lots of people use prescription drugs. Georgetown University puts that number at 66 percent of U.S. adults. Is there anyone that should avoid smoking weed while taking certain medications with the last 30 seconds we have left, Dr. Juan? Well, I think you have to be really vigilant. I mean, I think it depends on uh, every patient. Uh, and certainly if you have chronic conditions, you already have, let's say, obstructive lung disease or you have heart conditions, you certainly don't want to be using it no matter what, no matter what medications you're on. But, you know, typically, you know, marijuana, when it's prescribed to patients, you know, they typically tend to be healthy patients or they typically tend to be patients that just need it for pain and for pain management. But definitely those who have underlying conditions, it's not recommended. Dr. Omer Awan, many thanks for your time and your expertise. As always, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks so much, Christian.